What are your thoughts on the, the sell-off that we've seen today? Um, well, hey, Sean, it's good to see you. I, I have to say it's, it's, it's definitely due. Uh, just to put things in perspective right now and, and to comment further on what Matt had said earlier, um, the U.S. market, the tech sector of the S&P right now is way overvalued, having a market cap of, of over $9 trillion. So just to put that in perspective, that surpasses the entire European stock market, including Switzerland, the U.K., which is currently has a market cap of $8.9 trillion. So I, I think right now this, this sell-off was definitely to be expected. Um, and even if you look at the numbers today, yeah, the market was down big today. But put that in perspective, the tech sector was down 6%, whereas things like energy and value stocks were, were down uh, less than 1% respectively. And so is this really a matter of tech itself being overvalued? And it, does it, is it still overvalued? And if that's the case, you know, are, should investors steer clear and look elsewhere? What's your take on that? Well, a couple of things on that. I think, I think tech is definitely overvalued, uh, no doubt about that. I mean, just a... Just one point I heard today, Mark uh, Tim Cook sold off about 265,000 shares of Apple, so that's that's kind of in, in, indicative of uh, of the of the tech sector being a little overvalued. But also, I think tech should definitely be something you want to own your portfolio, but it shouldn't be the whole ball of wax. And as a matter of fact, what I'm doing with my own clients right now is we're actually taking a lot of profits from the growth sector in general, tech included, and buying into things that are a little bit cheaper right now. So, if like uh, for instance, uh, Matt had pointed out, you know, anything really value based at this point. Yeah, it was very cheap right now, but also paying a dividend. And actually, if you look at value versus growth, value actually outperforms growth 67% of the time. So I think, you know, from that perspective, again, tech's always good to own, uh, growth is good to own, but you want to have a really well-balanced portfolio, and I think now's a good time to be taking some profits. And so you're focusing in on some some interesting areas, and, and one of those actually is energy, which was, I never thought we'd be saying this this year, but they were sort of the, the market, really held the market up there for a little bit today. Um, I mean, if you're looking at just the, uh, the energy sector, came screaming out of the gate at the open higher and then sort of joined the, the volatility that we just saw throughout the day. But where are you looking in the energy sector specifically for opportunity? Um, in our particular portfolio, we hold uh, mastered limited partnerships, uh, pipeline indexes. Uh, you know, to your point, very cheap right now, even though it, it came out of the gate screaming today. But also, it pays a really good dividend. Um, and what I always like to say to people is that dividends are great because they bribe you to wait. <laughs> and so, if you're if you're looking at the energy sector, and they're the big concern, I think rightfully so, is on cash flow. So is there no concern about um, the need to cut dividends or anything uh, anytime soon? Um, I mean, that's always a concern. Um, you know, again, it's, it's just like anything else that you own in a balanced portfolio. You don't want it to be, you don't want it to be the, uh, be everything. So, I mean, of course, there's always going to be that risk, but I still think it's a, it's a good place to own. As a matter of fact, uh, last week, Warren Buffett uh, bought a, a pretty substantial chunk of Dominion Energy. So, you know, I'm with the philosophy. Warren Buffett's the greatest investor in the world. If he's buying it, that's good enough for me. And so, what you're also looking at some international names. Um, let us. What are those uh, specifically? And these are areas of the market that are that are relatively cheap, and more importantly, they're paying a great dividend. And so, are you really are you making any sort of changes to equity allocation at all, or are you um, planning on increasing? Are you planning on maybe decreasing that and, and finding some opportunities in, in some more of the fixed income type markets? What are you doing just in terms of asset allocation? Uh, well, right now, you know, we're not predominantly adding back to fixed income, uh, but we are we are definitely taking some profits out of the, the both the growth and the tech sector. Um, we get the employment situation report tomorrow. Is there anything? Do any decisions hinge on on what does or doesn't come out of that report? Is is that something you're really keyed in on, or are you sort of taking a little bit more of a a broad view of, of a lot of different uh, you know economic data points that are coming in? More of a broad view, you know, I'm of the philosophy that uh, markets operate and time passes. So, you know, really the, the key to being successful as an investor is that you just have to be in. And right now, I mean, just going back to what I talked about before, taking some some profits out of growth, adding back into value. I mean, the spreads there, you could drive a truck through them. So, you know, that's not something that's just going to shut off overnight as a result of good or bad employment numbers.